Good morning. I have to tell you, it's tough to find up a stand-up comic like Orrin Hatch. It's a real, it's really a tough job. Uh, you got a Seattle Mariner pinch heading for a Boston Red Sox, John Kerry today. I found out about this gig at 12:30 last night, so I'm excited about it, and I'm excited about the topic. And it is obvious uh, what we should be talking about today. You look at the headlines uh, when you ask what Congress should be doing today: gasoline at four dollars plus, wars in the Middle East. Global warming, acidifying the oceans, destroying some life off my coast of the state of Washington, havoc economically, environmentally. It is clear Congress needs to deal with steroids in baseball. So, <laughs> so perhaps, perhaps we can turn our attention to a more pressing and more promising uh, issue, which is the decarbonization of the United States economy and the seizing of this greatest challenge and greatest economic opportunity that America has had since the internet age. And I believe that is what we are facing today. And I'm very excited about the moment that you and I get to live in. This is a great time to be alive. Today, uh, I get to see something I thought I'd only enjoy three times in my life, and that is I got to watch the birth of my three sons. And each one of those days were special memories for me. But I believe right now we're experiencing the birth of a whole new industry. And this people and the people in this room are involved in that uh, conception and delivery, and I intend to be involved in some way in both of those for the delivery of this new industry. And I'll tell you why I am so excited about it. I'm a child of the 60s, and I want to hearken back to what I believe this industry, how it should look at itself in the historical context. I want to hearken back when I was 10 years of age, May 25th, 1961. We were engaged in a, uh, a battle with communism in a Cold War. We had a young president. We were uncertain of our future. And on May 25th, John F. Kennedy went in front of the Congress, and he said, we are going to put a man on the moon in 10 years and bring him back safely. A very, very audacious thing to say. If you will recall the state of affairs technologically at that moment, uh, our rockets were blown up on the launch pad. The Russians had launched a bus in orbit. We'd launched like a softball. We had not even invented Tang yet. And yet this president, this president called America to a bold vision to put a man in 10 years. And it was interesting, when he, uh, when he did so, um, the, the, the chair of NASA, a guy named James Webb, turned, as soon as Kennedy said that, which they didn't, even NASA didn't know he was going to say this, turned to his assistant, Bob Gilruth, and said, Bob, can we do this? <laughs> and Bob said, yes, absolutely, we have to. And I believe that's the answer to what we need to do. We have to revolutionize the United States into a clean energy economy. Now, when Kennedy said that, I'm going to talk about, I know we're talking about plug-in hybrids, a specific technology but I want to ask you to embrace a larger vision on how we fit into the American story. Because I think there's a story here associated with John F. Kennedy. When Kennedy said this, he didn't know how we were going to get to the moon. He really didn't have any idea. But he knew three things about the American character that I think you and I know and we need to make sure the rest of the world knows. And I want to harken back. Yesterday I went to the floor. The first issue became apparent to me yesterday. I went to the floor to give a one-minute speech. And uh, the speaker right before me uh, harkened back to a quote. It's in the House of Representatives by Daniel Webster. And it says, America has to develop its greatest resource or greatest resources. And of course, the speaker before me said, that was, of course, oil. That we just got to drill more holes in the ground. That is the solution to our energy challenge. And he harkened to Webster's quote above the speaker's rostrum. I got up there and said, appreciate the sentiment, appreciate the quote, but that speaker misunderstood the fundamental resource that America now has to draw upon. There is only one resource that America has that is gifted, that is a truly inexhaustible, infinite, infinitely renewable source of energy resource. And that energy resource is the human intellect and the power of creativity and the power of innovation that, it, that is involved in the American character. And John F. Kennedy understood the power of that resource. And now for everything that I think we need to do, we need to inspire and, and enable that infinite intellectual resource, as Kennedy did. Second, 
What Kennedy understood was the power of liberty and the Americans' desire for freedom and liberty. And that animated part of his effort in his efforts against communism. We now are involved in a struggle for liberty and freedom as well. Only this time, it is freedom and liberty from the addiction and enslavement and chains of oil addiction to the Mideast. And when you are going to work in the morning, you are in the cause of liberty. Liberty in the fashion that an American driver, when they want to get their car, isn't going to be beholden to someone in the Mideast and have only one option, and that is oil. We are in the business of liberty here in this room, and we should make sure that our allies know that. Third thing that Kennedy knew, he knew about the power of competition. And he knew that Americans are competitive as racehorses. He drew on the power of that competition, competition against the Soviet Union in the 60s. We now are in another kind of race. We were in a space race in the 60s. We now are in a clean energy race, and that race is determine which nations will provide the world with clean energy technology. The race is on. It has been joined to see who will sell clean energy technology to China and India. I had lunch with the Prime Minister of India the other day. He pointed out that he has 400 million of his constituents that do not even have as much as a light bulb. They have no access to electricity. India is going to demand access to electricity. And we are involved in a race with Germany and Denmark and Spain and England to build the technologies to sell to the developing world so that the world does not cook and we can get China off those one coal fire plants a week that they are now building. And you know what? We haven't really got out of the gate on this race yet. We have not developed a feed-in tariff like Germany has, which allowed them to leapfrog us in photovoltaic energy. We, did not, we have not embraced a national renewable portfolio standard like Denmark did, which allowed them to develop their wind power technology. We need to get out of the gate. But I believe that the space race is a good metaphor what we're capable of. We were late out of the gate. Those of you my age remember the, the, the shock of Sputnik, what it was to the American consciousness. We need to now overtake and surpass our international competitors on this race for clean energy, and I believe we are fully capable of doing that. So that's sort of where we are in an American, the fabric of the American story. I want to share with you why I am totally optimistic about, about America's ability uh, to achieve that. And, and to, to sort of tell you a story about why I'm optimistic, one, it's by nature and genetics, two, it's by necessity, but three, it's by my experiences in the last several years. And I just want to share with you one day, uh, Dan mentioned I wrote this book, uh, Apollo's Fire. By the way, he said it's highly regarded. It's highly regarded in the Inslee family. That's what he's talking about. So, <laughs> Although my dad called me up a couple weeks ago and he, Jay, I read this thing I read this thing, this sentence here, it doesn't make any sense at all. And I, I said, well, Dad, you know, we were trying to explain this concept. He says, I don't care. It doesn't make sense. You need to write these things more clearly. This is on page like 280, right? So he's on my case big time about this sentence. It doesn't make sense. And I tried to explain to him what we meant. He says, why don't you just say that? You know, Jay, I thanks a lot, Dad. I wrote this book. Real kudos for my dad. And finally, I just said, Dad, I'll tell you the truth. My co-author wrote that sentence. <laughs> Bracken Hendricks, who I really loved writing this book with, and he said, no excuses, son. <laughs> so anyway, that's my adventure writing this book. 